All right, my friends, Herbal Community, thank you for joining in. We're gonna wait for a few minutes. It's just seven o'clock right now, so that a few more of us can jump online. But in the meantime, as you're waiting, uh, for those of you watching the recording, uh, skip past the first minute if you want, otherwise there's good stuff here too. Um, but for those of you who are joining us live, please let us know where you're calling from. Uh, let us know where you're coming from. Do you have any tea? Do you have any favorite uh, beverage that you're drinking right now? Um, and what are you up to? I know we're, I don't know what day it is now in social distancing land, but um, we're here uh, together around the digital campfire, as we call this little screen in your living room is beaming me to you. And we're going to talk about cleansing today. So uh, yeah, let us know in the chat where you're at. Looks like we've got 68 of us online already. Those of you who are keen, I know our first series, first of this webinar series we had some technical difficulties, but now we've got that all figured out. So we've got all of you live. And so I'm going to just join this onto Facebook right now so that we can have some more folks live there. Um, but yeah, let us know where you're calling from. Um, we'll check in. All right, we got, let's see, we got some folks from California, Jordan River, from Creston in, or in Vancouver, Victoria, Cochrane. All right, Hornby Island is close by, Burnaby, Parksville, Calgary, Golden, bunch of different places. New York City, Welcome to this series. This has been such a privilege to share over the last four weeks with you. And this is part four of our four part series. So I'm going to be sad. I'm going to miss you already. Um, but yeah, as, as we go, just give me a second here. I'm going to just throw this up live on Facebook. So just sit back, have your tea, tell us where you're coming from and what your favorite drink is that you're doing right now. And we're going to talk about cleansing. So this is one of my favorite topics. So um, yeah, give me a sec. And for those of you who are just joining us, um, and you let me know if you've actually seen any of the other webinars. And if you haven't, I highly recommend you go to harmonicartslive.com. So at harmonicartslive.com, we have all these webinars, this whole webinar series. They're all available there. Um, you can see the recordings as well. If you sign up, you're going to get a coupon code in this one for some cleansing products. So um, just for some of the harmonic arts herbs that we love to work with. All right, I am almost done. Okay. All right. Okay. We are live. Thank you all for joining me. It looks like we have 85 of you already online. Um, and for those of you joining us live on Facebook, um, please give your comments. Elise is going to be there to share and support um, with some answers as well as I will check in later on and try to answer those. For those of you in the Zoom webinar, um, I want to say the last couple I've done, we get so many great questions and answers, but I don't always get to them at the end. So if you have questions that didn't get answered, please hop back onto the Facebook feed and check out Harmonic Arts on Facebook and just ask them there because after it's over, I'm not able to always answer them, but I will take some moments to stop throughout it and talk about a few of the different questions that people have coming up. So first off, um, I'm Yara Willard, and I'm a clinical herbalist formulator here at Harmonic Arts and kind of one of the co-creators. This was actually meant to be a webinar with both me and my partner, Angela Willard. She is another amazing herbalist who knows a lot about cleansing and knows a lot about working with plant medicine. Unfortunately, based on what's going on in the world with all the social distancing and having children. Um, some of you have children as well. We could not get the right, uh, we couldn't feel good about having somebody come and watch our kids. So we weren't able to both be here um, based on social distancing practices and running a business and wanting to be good to our team. So it's just me, um, but I am going to try and share some of the things that she wanted to share. Um, Things like working with the sea vegetables and how they are bioremediators and pull out all the toxins in the body. Things like how a cleanse can be this kind of spiritual purification. I know there's a whole lot that she wanted to share more, so I'll get into some of that. But first off, just to kind of connect in with all of you, um, I want to just say I appreciate your time and that you're here right now. Uh, this is as, as important to me as anything is that we're here we are as a group kind of working with this time of year. So it's cleanse season and that's why we're doing a talk on cleanse. This is the fourth of a series and this one is near and dear to my heart. I've already done a spring cleanse uh, because 
right when all of this stuff happened with the social isolation, I was feeling really vital, really uh, energetic. And me and my partner kind of made that decision that, hey, right now, when you're vital, when you're feeling good, is the best time to cleanse, to clear what no longer serves you. So uh, this is something that's been going on since the beginning of time. Cleansing is not new. It's not new as of 2020, even though we are on a mass, mass cleanse as a group right now, our whole society is cleansing in some form or another. Some of us may not see it as that, but for those of us who asked for 2020 vision um, for our, our year 220, well, we, we're getting it. We're getting it in maybe a form we didn't necessarily want or, or expect, but we've got to go deep into the self. And that's what cleansing is kind of about. Every culture in the history of time had some kind of ritual around clearing and cleansing and letting go. This whole concept of in, do, out. Tonight we're going to talk about the out. How do we move out what doesn't serve us? How do we make space, not just on a physical level with herbs, which is our main focus tonight, but how do we make space for what's coming next? And how does cleansing improve our capacity to handle stress for our immune system to be for our homeostasis to be more balanced, for us to be more flexible and adaptable in the world. One of the last talks we did was on adaptogens and the concept of you are the adaptogen is something I'm always wanting to share that we are the adaptogen. And part of that is in going through this process of waxing on and waxing off. Any of you who watched The Karate Kid and you watched, like that was just such a great example of what a type of cleanse was. He had to go through a hazing of literally wax on, wax off. And he didn't understand it, moving through, doing all these things, but essentially what he's doing is he's cleansing, building, cleansing, building, cleansing, building. And this, my friends, is the way to the vital human. To be a vital human requires that kind of stretching and contracting, stretching and contracting. And so one of those sort of forms is cleansing. And every, history, every culture, like I was mentioning, had some form of this, had some way of doing a, a powerful purge. Some of them were things like fasting, right? Many of us have heard of fasting or seen fasting or meditation where you literally are in a sense fasting um, to move out things that weren't serving us so we could see a bigger vision of our life. Other ones are things like the master cleanse, which is an old cleanse that's been around. I was actually talking to a friend today who was on the master cleanse and is just sharing how much he's loving the lack of kind of food, the consistency of that type of cleanse and how it's helping him. Now, this is more of an advanced cleanse. My high, highest recommendation with doing some of these cleanses that are fasts, juice fasts, master cleanse, uh, just straight up water fast, any of these fruit fasts, these kinds of cleanse is that you make sure you're really vital when you do them. And I think of them as a level two cleanse. A level one cleanse is an awareness cleanse around our diet and food and kind of hiving down to the best food that is specific for clearing from the body and, and to really work with some of the herbs. This is my level one cleanse, this is my go-to. Every year we try to do a cleanse like this. My recommendation, I don't always follow this, is to do one in the spring and in the fall. So these are the two seasons when we look at this kind of holistic landscape of the seasons and we see that we overlap this kind of yin yang or cleanse build kind of duality um, aspect, we see that in the summer is building and in the winter is building and in the fall and spring is cleansing. And most cultures did a cleanse during these times, whether it was a cleanse of clearing all the stuff out of the cupboards and you've, you've often done probably spring cleanses, even just of your garage, right? But uh, essentially, if you have a garage, that is, if you're minimalists, you don't have stuff anyway, but if you do, Moving that out feels so good. You know, I know when I clear my computer, it feels so good. When I, when I clear my, um, my inbox, I'm like, yes, that's a form of cleansing in a way. So I want us to kind of really look at cleansing from that wider lens that what we're actually trying to do here is make space for being more present and for being more vital and for our ecosystem internally to be thriving, right? Uh, Things cake up, things stagnate. It's just like cutting your hair sometimes. When we cut our hair, oh, it clears that. I know when I shave my beard, it clears all of the memory and energy from that time in the past. So we're gonna talk a little bit along that, but really what I wanna focus on 
tonight is some of the herbs, some of the best ways to cleanse and some of the diet that might be involved. So I gave a little teaser about the master cleanse. So maybe I'll just jump there first before we get into the diet. This cleanse is a simple, simple one that it involves lemon juice, um, maple syrup, and cayenne. And essentially that's all you eat or drink is this lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne for a series of days. Um, that kind of cleanse, like I was saying, I think of as a level two. It's somewhat dangerous if you do it improperly um, or if your body is not ready for it. If you've got a load of toxins built up, it's important not to do those kinds of cleanses right away. Another one are those juice fasts. I, I think they're amazing, but I also think that it's important to be careful around making sure that your body is prepped for this. So I would maybe do one of those when you're in highest vitality, but otherwise, every year, I highly recommend you do some kind of herbal detox, some kind of herbal cleanse, some kind of thing along that line where we remove out certain foods in the diet. And I'm gonna go through those foods um, really simply, and I'm gonna go through some of those herbs. So before we get there, let's look at the eliminatory channels. This is the biggest piece of cleansing, right? We're in the in, do, out. We're talking about the out phase in this. And we're all doing a little spiritual purge right now, but what is our physical channel? These are important for us to recognize and to access more vitality in our cleansing process. So we have four channels. We have our skin, right? Our main biggest eliminatory organ is our skin, moving stuff out of us. We have our bowels, right? Moving out through the bowels. Uh, obviously we evacuate that way. We have our kidney bladder, right? Moving out that way. And then we have our lungs. Most people don't think of the lungs or the skin as eliminatory channels necessarily. The lungs we can <coughs> cough out, move out, what no longer serves us is part of our elimination. So when we're cleansing, we wanna focus on these, but we also, uh, because the root of our health is through our digestive system, that's where we're gonna put our focus too. So we're gonna focus on digestive health and moving out these systems. Now there are some, uh, I guess, secondary systems that are really important in cleansing. The biggest one is going to be our liver, right? Our liver is our, what we call the shipper receiver of the body. It is the grand alchemist in our body. It does all the processing. It transforms the hormones. It detoxifies um, the, the toxins in our body. It cleanses and emulsifies the fats and it, it helps filter and clear the blood. So the liver is going to be a huge piece of that. Yes, uh, Sharon just mentioned that in women, the vagina is also a cleansing outlet. So it's true that women are lucky they have this extra cleansing outlet. There's one sort of thought, just to kind of take a side tangent there, that women live longer than men because of bleeding. The bleeding process actually is part of a detoxification process that eliminates out heavy metals and funky stuff through that blood. So that bloodletting or bleeding in that process actually is one of the things that keeps women, the average age of women a little longer. And many, many older women you can see are often more cognitive than older men, uh, a little more aware, a little more healthy and with it. Not always the case, but part of it has to do with that process. So yes, that's another one that I wasn't mentioning. Um, but then the next, so we have our secondary systems and so there are liver. And I like to think of the small intestinal tract and all the digestive enzymes as part of that secondary system too. It's how are these functioning? Are these functioning well for us? Are we actually digesting our food? Are we moving that through us? Before it even gets to our microbiome, more of our lower intestinal tract, where a lot of the interesting bacteria and fungi and protozoa and parasites and all that stuff live, how is it getting through our small intestine? Are we actually breaking these foods down properly to move them through? So I, I like to focus on that as part of the cleanse, including stomach, stomach, small intestine, that whole aspect, pancreas um, and liver and bile moving in. That's all piece of it. Another one that's really important to think about um, when we're cleansing is our blood and blood filtering. So we're going to look at herbs that might support filtering the blood and using the blood as our main way of moving toxins out of the body or into the digestive tract via the liver's filtration, right? The liver filters the blood and we want cleansing herbs in the blood to move that out so that when they get into the digestive tract, it's moving out more. So that's where we're gonna kind of go tonight to talk a little bit about the best ways to cleanse and the best aspects of our body to really um, make this happen. So, all right. 
So first off, let's just kind of, I'm not going to take too much time to talk about the skin and the lungs, even though those are two of those eliminatory organs, but I will start with them because I feel like then we can kind of move out of those and pass that and get into the, the meat of this, the, the veggies of this, whatever that is for you, um, the digestive system and moving out to toxins in the blood and liver and all that. So for the skin, let's just start there. When it comes to cleansing, the skin is obviously this eliminatory organ that sweats, but also we see people get acne, right? This is a form of cleansing. Often people who get acne actually have a good eliminatory system on their skin. Uh, and it's often other eliminatory channels that are not moving. What we see is that when one eliminatory channel is not moving, other ones take the load. And so sometimes acne and skin cleansing is actually taking the load of a lower intestinal tract that's not functioning. This is quite common, those two um, that are maybe not working in, in alignment that way. So the, the skin will take that. That's a big piece of that. So the cleansing of the skin is also one of the best ways to do this is often hot, cold, right? Hot, cold, hot, cold. Exposure to the elements, to the cold, to heat, to, to almost think of the skin as a sponge and we're gonna get it hot, get it cold. So when you're doing any kind of cleanse, I highly recommend you take, you invest some time in a sauna or doing the steam room. Obviously with some of this stuff, uh, that's not possible if we're in quarantine, um, but if we have one of these infrared saunas in our house, awesome, or a hot bath, or what I mostly do and find this to be just the best for me, is I do the hot cold shower. I find this to be a great piece of my cleansing to get really hot, as hot as I can possibly handle it, breathe deep, and then as cold as I can possibly go and do this rapidly back and forth, always ending in cold. Great type of simple cleanse you can do just like right now, well, tomorrow after this video even, you could go have a hot cold shower. But doing that daily is the best way to work with the skin in that sense. Okay, and I see somebody asking about, um, is it similar to eczema? Yeah, eczema often is a liver um, metabolism issue or part of that oil metabolism, right? When we do cleansing, the concept is to wipe the slate clean so that our body can function in its best again and, and give the resources we have to the parts of our system that are slightly out of balance or need a little more support. So we cleanse as a first step to most health imbalances. I've seen this to be the case, actually just as a touch in on that, when I was doing student clinic, I'm a clinical herbalist. We did like 300 hours of student clinic. One of the things that was very, very clear in almost consistent across the board with most herbal practitioners that I studied under and with various um, people that we saw as clients, we did their pulse and tongue or, or whatever diagnostic tools we used. It was that they really should almost be doing a cleanse first and then coming and seeing the practitioner. That's gonna be the first step almost every time we put somebody on a herbal detox or put them on a cleanse of some form, a candida cleanse or a dietary cleanse, come back in two weeks and let's see how this changes your symptoms. Because most of our health imbalances, at least chronic ones, come down to toxic load in the body, come down to not eliminating toxins, holding on to them, creating imbalances. And when we treat this, when we work with this, this often re relieves so many other pieces of our health uh, imbalance, some of our, of our issues. So things like eczema, yeah, the first thing I would do is tell somebody to do a cleanse with lots of liver support. Um, get out of those foods too. So I really want to get into the diet because I feel like the diet is key. Many people have asked me, hey, can I take these herbs and not do the diet because I've got all these other things going on? I say yes, but the diet is 80% of the cleanse. Uh, the herbs are there as supporting allies. The diet is the most important thing. So if you ever try to do a cleanse without a specific diet, and there's lots of products out there on the health food store shelves that don't come with a dietary protocol that say, yeah, here's a cleanse be gone or be cleansing or whatever they might be. I don't wanna um, you know, say anything negative about other products, but I will say that if they are not suggesting a diet or you are not following a cleansing diet, you're only doing 20% of the work of cleansing until you incorporate the diet. Now the diet, I guess we're gonna go there. Let's go to the diet first. The diet brings a piece of awareness. And actually, no, before we get to the diet, I wanna talk one more step about cleansing that I really love. This concept I wanna kind of weave in throughout this. 
And it's really going back, take a step back from all of this and look at um, old cultural wisdom and look at what cleansing did for the person from a spiritual, mental, emotional level, as well as a physical level. So cleansing has always been a way of changing, of changing our perspective, a way of shifting from a state that is stagnant, right? It's always been that. So every spiritual purge, every fast, every kind of cultural um, uh, story around this type of thing has been a way of clearing so that actually our sensory gating channels and that our channels of perception become cleaner and we see a bigger picture. That's really the goal of a cleanse is actually to see a bigger picture, to get more perspective, more of a, a spiritual meditation is something I would just really invite you. Now, I, I, I had this funny quote I saw the other day. I thought it was great. It was like, we are all spiritual. Some of us have just become religious um, and I'm not going to slam any religions or anything, <laughs> please no. But I will say that at some level, all of us have a level of spiritual ism to us, a spirit body that wants to come out. And I think cleansing is a good way to support our spiritual health as well. Uh, and even those of us who feel that scientific, logical minded perspective is the, um, the way to, to proceed. Learning for this kind of uh, deeper level of, of connection to something bigger, some form of purpose, some form of spirit. And cleansing helps us see that. It helps us gain some awareness and uh, grow our perspective of what it is we're here to do and how we can show up as our best selves. Our planet needs us. Our planet needs to cleanse. And if we do a little bit of that cleanse work to begin with, uh, we come in service much better to ourselves, to our families, to our jobs, to our planet, to our pets, to everyone. So I just, that's my little rant. I really want to invite you to it, adopt some kind of cleanse every year as a ritual, as a ceremony, so to speak, as a shifting of perspectives, because whatever it is that we, we are doing in our lives, they start to weigh down on us and they start to cake into our system. We need to move those every so often. And I just think spring, perfect time. My invitation, if you haven't done one already, is to start a cleanse in the next couple of weeks. Now is just the perfect time to do this. And like I said, I just did a, we just did a, a two week cleanse. And I'm gonna talk about diet now and I talk about some of the herbs, some of the things that I think are really useful. But that's the first layer I really wanna overlap and just invite you to remember and re as a reminder, that a cleanse is about removing those things that aren't serving us. Okay, so like I said, 80% of a cleanse is the diet. The diet, the diet, the diet. These herbs, we've got great herbs to support the liver and the digestive function and all of that. And I'm going to talk about those, but and blood and kidneys and you know, you name it, you know, alimentary channels. But it's the diet. What is this diet? Um, what are you talking about? So there's lots of diets in the world. Um, you've obviously probably been around for a little while and seen things like the Atkins and the, the South Beach diet and uh, the ketogenic diet is now the thing, the paleolithic diet. There's lots of like, what is the best food for humans? Um, so my belief on diet, and this is different for everyone, but I, I will say that there's a very simple approach to diet that doesn't require strict protocols, but requires more of an intuition. And I believe Intuition is the key to dietary success. I don't believe in following someone else's program for a diet necessarily, other than um, cleansing. And cleansing can be a clearing of my, my diet, my habitry, in order to see what maybe wasn't serving me. And so when I find a spring cleanse diet, to be, what I find to be effective about that is that even if I don't like to eat that way all the time, it sure makes me aware of my own addictions to certain types of food. And it sure makes me aware of what is actually in my food. Because I go to the grocery store and I say, oh, I can't have these preservatives or I can't have um, things with this type of ingredient in it. Wow, that stuff's everywhere. It's in everything. I go to say, I pick up a can of Campbell's soup. One of the things you can't have on a cleanse or you shouldn't have is like uh, yeast. You shouldn't have yeast. And it's in like every can of Campbell's soup. Uh, it's in there. There's all kinds of flour products right there. So let's talk about diet for a second and get there. The cleanse diet, uh, I follow 
is basically the Wild Rose Detox Diet, or very similar to that. This is, if, if any of you know the Wild Rose Detox, big thumbs up, hands up for the Wild Rose Detox. Amazing cleanse, number one cleanse in North America, uh, best cleanse that I know of. And it is actually, um, well, it's my father's cleanse. Dr. Terry Willard did the Wild Rose Detox, created it, and has put that into the world. That's something that I've been doing my whole life, you know, since I was a teenager, I've been doing Wild Rose Detoxes. So I'm maybe on my like, I think I've done at least 30 detoxes, at least um, in the course of my life of that particular cleanse. So I found myself really attuned to that diet um, because it's really effective. And I'm gonna just talk about it right now. That's the diet I suggest. And if you're tuning in through our Zoom webinar, you are gonna get a little uh, follow-up email from Elise, our marketing team. She's gonna share with you the diet in a sheet, so you're gonna have that to look at, and some other cleansing ideas and a little cleansing dietary protocols that we've put together. So if you're not tuning in through the Zoom, um, my recommendation is you go in, if you're on Facebook or something like that, you go in and you sign up on harmonicartslive.com for that, to make sure you get that bonus material. And also a little bonus coupon code so you can get some cleanse products and start your cleanse today. Okay, so the diet. Oh, I should have been talking about this diet. I'm not really said anything about it yet. Essentially, there are two components to it. There are foods you don't eat and foods you eat, and there are acid and alkaline. So, um, that's what we start on when we're eating uh, our tradition or our typical Western diet. It tends to be more acidic. We tend to eat more acidic foods. So look to, and you can easily Google acid alkaline food guides um, to get an understanding of this. But essentially, one of the biggest things we want to make sure as we go into a cleanse diet is we're eating more alkaline foods. So the concept is instead of eating the average North American eats like 80% acid foods and neutral foods and 20% alkaline, um, if that even, we wanna flip that and do the 80-20 the other way where we've got 80% alkaline and neutral foods and 20% acidic foods. And those are things like tomatoes and meats and coffees and blah, 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 that kind of stuff is acidic. All your vegetables are alkaline, right? Very simple, you know, think of chlorophyll as the like supreme kind of alkalinity piece to that kind of food. So you wanna load up on veg. You want to load up on veg. You want to make sure that that's a big piece of it. There's also certain foods that are really good for eliminating toxins. And those are things like onions and garlic and leeks and that kind of stuff, right? We want to increase those, just massively upload uh, extra detoxifying foods. Those are also some of our herbs, and we'll get into some of those. Like, But you might want to add some of those herbs in as foods. Like you can buy burdock, what a great cleansing herb. You can buy it, you can dig up dandelion roots and make tea with them. Or um, if you're in your garden, you can also make, use dandelion in a, in a smoothie if you want. You can use greens of some of these wild plants in your blends. So this is the biggest piece is acid alkaline, really increasing your alkalinity throughout the cleansing process. And that helps detoxify. Chlorophyll is the supreme detoxifier. One of the cleanses that's done in uh, Japan almost every year is called a chlorella cleanse. And it's just kind of common throughout the culture. And as a child, um, my dad would always set this up really simply on the table, not asking us to do a cleanse, just put a big jar of chlorella tablets in the middle of the, the dinner table. And the idea is eating 10 to 30 of these chlorella tablets a day for the course of a month or the course of two weeks as a clearing, as a high uh, alkaline detoxification process. We also know that chlorella really pulls out heavy metals and all that kind of stuff, but the chlorophyll is a big piece of our cleanse. So if you're not a big vegetable lover, uh, become one for your 10 to 12 days, whatever it is you want to do a cleanse for. My recommendation is starting with a 10 day cleanse. It's simple, it's doable, and I also recommend with diet in general that you start on a weekend, start at the beginning of a weekend. This is really important. And the reason why is because, I mean, if, if you're not going to work right now or you're doing a different kind of life with your social distancing, then maybe that doesn't matter. But if you are, it's best to start your new diet with time off, with time at home, with time to actually prep your meals. There's a lot of other tips I have around that, like making bulk meals where you're 
actually going to be eating something for a couple of days. Therefore, you're not stuck. There's also lots of little snack tips I have around eating, finding the right snacky foods because half the time, if we're addicted to the wrong foods, we're going to crave those foods throughout our cleanse. All right. So acid alkaline, that's the first piece of the diet. The second one is foods I can and foods I can't have. Um, so 20% acid, 80% neutral and alkaline. The foods I can and can't have, they come down to really simple, intuitive, what creates sugars in the body? What creates candida? What creates fermentation? Some of you are already eating a diet that is like this, but for most of us, we're not. The idea of um, clearing all of these kinds of products can be really challenging in our lives. It can actually put some people into an existential crisis or create a lot of addictive uh, desires that are like hungry. I'm, I'm still hungry. I've eaten as much food as I can, but I'm still hungry because I'm not getting those foods my candy is addicted to. So what are these foods? These are things like flour products and sugar products and dairy products and fermented um, beverages like beers and wines and tropical fruits, any sweet fruits, uh, super starchy vegetables like potatoes are kind of borderline. Uh, you're better to do things like yams and squashes and other kind of somewhat starchy vegetables that contain some indigestible fibers and are also better on the, the digestive system. Don't spike the blood sugar. So we're trying not to spike our blood sugar in a cleanse. That focus is going to be on is having foods that are not going to create blood sugar imbalances. So zero, I'm talking zero on your cleanse, flour products. Or, um, you know, we went in, in clinic, we said, okay, you're not allowed to have any bread. And the guy went up to the receptionist afterward. He's like, he's like, asked the receptionist, he said, so do you have any other suggestions besides bagels? I'm getting really sick of bagels because because they said I can't have any bread, but I need something other than bagels now. And they're like, oh man, no flour products. Doesn't mean if it's like, like I'm talking pasta, I'm talking uh, bread, bagels, wraps, all of that. Zero flour products. Uh, zero kind of refined products like that. Almond flour is fine. Um, it's a little more proteinous. There are some gray zones in this kind of cleanse, like coconut flour and almond flour. My personal recommendation, if it's a white powder, take it out of your diet for the cleanse. Um, don't, like, like, it's okay. You will survive without almond flour and coconut flour. I believe that um, all of these like flours, try to do a whole grain. Maybe cook almonds and use coconut and use quinoa instead of the quinoa flours. The more processed it is, and manna bread is another one. I say no manna bread. Lots of questions around that. I'm seeing them coming in my feed right now. And yeah, the manna bread, the problem with manna bread is, is I love it. And I used to totally cheat on my cleanse with manna bread um, because it's like sprouted grains. Uh, the only thing is, is it's usually pretty sweet, tastes really yummy. And um, it, 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 the reason it's in the freezer, that manna bread, is because it, it goes off really quickly. It molds. If something molds really quickly, it's going to create more candida. That's just really how it is. Um, other than Wonder Bread, which doesn't mold, but still creates candida. Um, but, but so that's my recommendation. Get away from all those. Don't try to find cheats. Uh, you can, but you're not cheating anyone else. You're only cheating yourself. So no flour products. Um, yes, technically you could do quinoa, coconut, almond, if you wanted to make that your gray area. But I really recommend instead of that, maybe make, if you really need a muffin, make it with whole quinoa, right? Do a flourless muffin, something like that. That's my recommendation. Whole foods, it's a whole foods diet. So no flour products and no sugar products um, in, of any form. Those are the two big ones. No dairy. Now, I have suggested to certain people, butter, is 100% okay. Um, and that just is, is because it's not got lactose in it and it's not got maybe a tiny, tiny bit, but it's not got sugars in it. It's the fats. The fats are slower to absorb. They're fine. So butter, okay, but get rid of the cream, get rid of the yogurt even. Yogurt is an amazing building product, um, but it's not a good one for a cleanse. Uh, it's for building, right? Wax on, wax off. Some of these foods we're going to introduce later on. So some of the fermented foods, remember I said no fermented beverages, 
I actually suggest very little in the way of fermented foods during a cleanse. Sauerkraut's amazing. It's a building product. You can do it in your cleanse. It's on the list. It's okay. But I recommend you stay a little bit away from those and you do no sugar products. If you really need it, you can do things like stevia and mannitol and um, monk fruit sweetener. But remember what you're doing with those fake sugars is you're tricking the body into thinking it's getting sugar when it's actually not. This is a slight crime in my mind against wisdom because it's telling the body something different, but it's not necessarily um, a cheat. I just, I recommend if you take the whole cleansing metaphor to a bit of a spiritual cleanse, you're also eliminating this desire for sweet. You're attempting to recalibrate the, the sweet tooth, the flower tooth, the candida mindset that comes from a Western diet. So get rid of those things. I see a couple more questions. I'm just gonna totally jump on these because they're, they're like, so um, one of them is about kombucha. I say no kombucha on a cleanse. Kombucha, unfortunately, and we talked about this, I think, in another talk here, is more sugar than it should be. Kombucha is made with black tea and a sugar. There's still sugar left in kombucha. It's a good builder. It has some good digestive support, but you'll know if you're not eating any flour and no sugar products, and then you have a sip of kombucha and you go, ah, oh, yeah, that's good. I love that. That's a high. You're getting a high from the kombucha because there is some sugar in it. It's your only source of sugar right now. So the cravings are coming out of that. I'd say no. Another question people are asking, what can I do for that? Sometimes we have to suffer a little bit in order to see the light. It's just like this whole situation happening with social distancing right now. Um, sure, you could probably go see your friend who's also been social distancing and has no um, signs or symptoms of corona, but, but you're kind of cheating the concept of social distancing. I, I'm, I'm not saying do or don't, but uh, certain things like that, you may want to look at, if you're doing a cleanse, you're really only affecting yourself with this. You're not, you're not accountable to Yarrow who says no sugar. Oh no, Yarrow's gonna be upset. I said no sugar and I had a little sugar. You're accountable to you. For every cheat you do on a cleanse, you end up putting yourself back a whole week. So I just, I highly recommend you do at least 10 day flush of no sugar, no none of that kind of stuff. I recommend not doing, not trying to find workarounds. So um, that means not, not trying to do too much like yogurty alternatives like the coconut yogurt that could be done water kefir could be done to a degree but i think water kefir requires a sweetener as well to ferment on so i don't recommend that either um, another one that somebody just brought up that i wanted to mention on the diet is no mushrooms other than medicinal mushrooms like reishi and cordyceps and lion's mane and chaga those are fine although Remember that those mushrooms are building, they're immunomodulator, immune supportive, they're building. Remember the concept of wax on, wax off. We essentially wanna take out, get rid of all of our supplements when we do a cleanse, other than cleansing supplements. So I recommend saving your mushrooms for your building phase of your medicinal mushrooms, and I recommend replacing them with higher dosages of cleansing herbs, um, which we're gonna get into in a minute. Um, but yeah, so, but no like button mushrooms or portobellas, those all create yeast and candida in the system. So none of those. And I also said no tropical fruit, but this stems a little further than just tropical fruit. This means no like sweet fruits. Um, and so one that I say that's fine is lemon and lime. Lemon and lime are like the only tropical fruit that I really say are okay. Um, because they're, they can be garnishes, they don't have this sweet flavor, but oranges, even grapefruits, grapefruits are borderline, but oranges are definitely no good. You know, mangoes, pineapples, bananas, but also things like grapes. Grapes are a yummy, sweet food. Uh, they should be eliminated too, even though they're not tropical. It's that kind of tropical family of sweet fruits. We wanna eat, if we're gonna eat fruits, things like our berries, high antioxidants, high um, flavonoids, things that aren't too sweet apples, pears, apricots, these kinds of fruits. Those are the types of fruits. We also don't want to eat dried fruits. So they just concentrate the sugars. We're not going to eat raisins or we're not going to eat dried apricots. We're going to try and keep to fresh living whole uh, 
fruits from a northern climate that can um, do well. Okay, so those are a few of those. Um, what else about diet? I want to make sure that I don't miss out. You're going to get a, a sheet anyway to tell you more of this stuff. But the uh, I guess yeah, the, the other thing about diet to be careful of is too many oily nuts, not too many cashews and things like that. Almonds are amazing, but cashews are not so good. So just so just to go back to the diet, it's it's actually pretty simple. It's alkaline, 80% neutral and alkaline foods, lots of grains, lots of um, whole foods in that way, lots of vegetables, lots of that type of thing, and acid foods, minimal. And those are things like tomatoes, maybe meats, um, other than fish, fish is totally okay to eat in abundance. And then highest on the list is gonna be all of our onions and garlic and detoxifying foods like that, and our leafy green vegetables. Eliminated foods are flour products, sugar products, tropical fruits, fermented beverages, in particular beers and wines and that, um, and um, all of those kind of dairy products that don't serve us. Plus things like a few things like button mushrooms and stuff like that. Okay, that's the diet. Um, okay, <clears throat> um, would you cleanse with a broken bone or wait till it heals? This is another question that's just come up. Would you cleanse um, and when would be the better time to cleanse throughout different cycles of the menstrual cycle? It's another one that's come up. I'll say that cleansing should be done when you feel vital. It should not be done when you're low energy. If you're really like, oh, I mean, if you broke a bone, but you've been there um, for a while, uh, you're mending, do a cleanse. Actually, I think I say a broken arm or a broken toe, because you are put on a reset. You've got to slow down, provided it's not causing you a lot of pain and um, taking away, robbing your energy at a, at a severe level, then yeah, well, you broke a bone, no problem. As far as menstrual cycle and what that is, Remember that the clearing phase of the menstrual cycle is after when, when, when you start to bleed. That's kind of the time to do the cleanse. I know my wife might have a lot more details on that from her perspective, um, but, but it's, this is a subtle difference. And yes, obviously in a, in a woman's life, this, this can govern a lot of different processes and when choosing to do the best, but think of that, um, that shedding as the cleansing cycle. Same thing with the moon, right? And these are also really subtle. Like the best time to do a cleanse for real is actually when you have the energy to do a cleanse. Put all of the rest of it aside. It doesn't even have to be spring or summer. Some people do it at New Year's because they're like, I have this momentum. I want to do better in my life. I'm going to do it New Year's, even though New Year's is intuitively not a good time because it's middle of winter. Uh, but do a cleanse when you have the energy to do a cleanse, when you have vitality to do it. But with the moon cycle, if I were to incorporate that in the wax on, wax off phenomenon, think of it from full moon to new moon is waxing off, right? That's the best time, ideally that way too. Uh, one question, why are cashews not good? They're just really oily, tropical nuts. Um, they're less ideal. They're kind of gray zone, um, but uh, another question about eggs. Eggs are in the acid foods. They should be in your lower 20%. Yes, you can eat eggs, but that is one of the things that comes up for a lot of people in a cleanse is this craving for a little more protein. Um, when they're eating a lot of vegetables, they still feel hungry. They're still, I'm still hungry. I'm not getting my candida foods, um, so I'm, which satisfy my digestive system, give me bloat essentially so I feel full. Think about like eggs are amazing. Um, a salad is amazing, but eggs fill you up more, or eggs and toast, toast is gonna fill you up way more than a salad. So half the time, one of the challenges people run into dietarily is they still feel hungry. They're like, I eat this huge salad, but I'm still hungry. So um, have snacks. Um, there's some wickedly awesome snacks. One of my favorites is popcorn. Uh, do have these snacks around. Another one is nuts. So yes, you can have some cashews, not ideal to have tons of Brazil nuts and cashews as opposed to oily nuts, but I mean, you could have some, but I'd recommend having a bag of almonds or something around. Pumpkin seeds are an amazing cleansing uh, nut. Seeds and nuts are a great way to get protein on a cleanse. Other things are things like smoked fish. Um, that's another easy one that a lot of people find they can just snack on, right? Um, and fish is a little better than many other, all your red meats and white meats for being less acidic, 
So it kind of fits into the neutral foods a little more than the acidic foods. Okay. Um, Eli's asking about natto. Yeah, you can do that. You can do a bunch of ferments. Our version of the cleanse is a little less strict when it comes to fermented foods. Um, but in a true kind of like uh, water rose detox type cleanse diet, you want to eliminate the fermented foods until the building phase. Um, yeah, so you can, and you can eat oily meats and stuff like that. Just keep them in the minimal, keep them in the smaller section of your diet. Typically in the Western diet, we eat way too many of these uh, meats and not enough vegetables. So we're trying to flip that, just trying to flip that. So someone asks about a lamb steak. Yes, but don't have like a lamb steak and a couple of peas, right? It's like maybe take that lamb steak and split it into two or three people and then have a big salad with it or a big soup with it. Um, if it's cold where you are, follow an intuitive diet around hot and cold types of foods. Don't eat a ton of salads in the middle of a rainy, cold, cold day. Start to make broths and soups, right? Squashes and more of these foods that are going to be good in that cold weather. Like right now, it's cold out in, in where I live. It's raining. It, two days ago, it was warm, but it's raining now. So my intuitive diet is soup right now. I just want soup today. That's all I can think of is soup. And so I have a lentil soup for lunch and it was awesome. But, but um, that kind of thing, try to be intuitive around what seasonality is in your specific environment and follow that a little bit in your intuition. Okay, other ones, things like, so I'm gonna, I'm going to park the conversation on food for a second um, at some point here because I do really, I know a bunch of you signed on here to learn about herbs and that's what I'm a specialist in is herbal medicine. So I really wanna take the time, the rest of the time to talk about this cleanse. But yeah, you can do MA to a degree, it's a fermented one. And yeah, I think it's way better than tofu. Um, tofu is borderline. You can definitely do that as well on a cleanse. But just keep that diet in mind. Acid, alkaline ratios, high veg, no simple carbohydrate foods or fermented foods or tropical fruits, those kind of things. Really simple, okay? All right. So let's talk about our eliminatory channels and cleansing them a little more. Um, at Harmonic Arts, we have a number of great ways to support you in your cleanse as far as herbal wisdom, things that can really help the body move through this and get the maximal effect. So think about this diet as 80% of, of the cleanse, shifting out those foods, having some cravings for foods you really want but you can't have, and the other like cream of the crop, the 20% that really maximizes and makes the cleanse happen, is the herbs. Um, and these are these eliminatory channel herbs and these ones that help process. So first off, let's talk about the liver. It's not an eliminatory channel, but it's probably the most important piece in my mind for doing a cleanse. So there are a number of herbs and, and the liver, when we talk about the liver, we also talk about the gallbladder and the bile. Remember that the bile is a way of moving fats and emulsifying them out of the body um, of clearing the body and that the liver takes all of that bile, puts it into the gallbladder as a way of it detoxifying. So you want the liver bile gallbladder system to be really functioning well to help move some of that out, right? Through the bile. <clears throat> and there are liver cleanses. There's full on um, a liver cleanse, like an oil liver flush. You can Google liver flush if you want. I don't recommend it. Lots of people have had challenges with it. It's gross and it's like chugging oil. It's kind of gross. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into the liver cleanse, but I will tell you about some of the herbs uh, that work really well. Probably the number one and two herb for me are burdock and dandelion. They are both the top of my cleansing herbs. And the reason is, and just from a perspective of um, their people plants. They follow us wherever we go. That means they're good for people just intuitively, but also the way that they go deep into the earth and break up stagnation. They do that in our body too. So dandelion and liver are both aerators, just like you might aerate a lawn with dandelions, essentially sending roots into the subsoil to pull nutrition up to this stagnant grassy lawn. That's what dandelions actually do. That's one of their purposes. Burdock is a similar thing with these inflamed soils and it, where it grows, it grows these roots way deep down to pull nutrition up into the subsoils. Both of them work like aerating for the liver. The liver is a dense organ that can be 
congested at times and a fatty liver is, is very common in the Western world. These help punch holes into that kind of fatty liver, not physically punching holes in the liver, but actually just aerating the blood circulation. They work as a three-part cleanser. They are blood cleansers, they are liver cleansers, and they are kidney cleansers. Anytime we work on the liver, we want to work on the kidneys as well. The kidneys are part of that elimination of the toxins that the liver is decongesting. So you don't want to just work on the liver and not work on the kidneys. So burdock and dandelion are just like primo herbs for working on the liver and for working on the blood. And so those are big pieces that I, I highly recommend uh, you add in in any kind of protocol. We do one called liver TLC. Uh, this is the tincture that we mostly suggest people do for a cleanse. I highly recommend you buy a 100 ml bottle if you're going to get the liver TLC because to really do a good cleanse, you want to take a couple of mils twice a day. That's four mils a day. That means it's going to last for 25 days, whereas this one's maybe going to last you 10 days. So you can do um, uh, at least that. That's my recommendation is that you do at least two milliliters twice a day of a liver tincture like this. This has dandelion and burdock, but it's also got some other ones that are specifically for this, which are things like the, uh, uh, sorry, they're things like the, um, the globe artichoke. So artichoke is another good one that's in here. That helps move the bile. Artichoke is another great one. Milk thistle. Milk thistle and artichoke are both good for helping detoxify or really support stagnant liver, get better circulation and move the bile out. So milk thistle is probably one of our favorite ones. That's one of the chiefs in this formula. Uh, the other ones that are in here that I think are, are really good things like uh, organ grape, bitters. So adding bitters into the diet also stimulates the liver. So organ grape is one of the bitters in here. It's antifungal and antibacterial. So it's a really good uh, route for our digestive system and the, the ecological imbalance that can happen. Part of the cleanse, remember, is we're flushing. So we want to take things that are gonna clear those things and then we might rebuild later on. So organ grape or golden seal or something like that is a great one for that. That is in our liver TLC. The other one that's in here that I think is really useful is a little bit of turmeric. Um, turmeric is just an anti-inflammatory, but it's a circulatory stimulant and it really supports liver metabolism and liver health. So that's kind of this one. I don't want to take too much time to talk about each individual tincture and why they're beneficial, but I do want to say that when it comes to working with your cleanse, the first place you want to make sure you have something to support is good liver health. This is our favorite formula for working with that, liver TLC, but you can also do that with teas. You know, there are lots of herbal teas, dandelion and burdock tea can be a great one to do with that. There are also lots of other herbs, so we're going to keep going on that. So first we start there. The next is going to be looking at digestive health. Um, and that's why maybe I'll just pull in the herbal bitters um, to start with. So the bitters work on the top level of digestion. We want to digest all of our food. Some people, I recommend getting a digestive enzyme as part of their cleanse. They take it, if they have really bad digestion, one thing that's really important is we're trying to starve the candida in a cleanse, or at least the microorganisms that thrive on simple sugars. So we want to do uh, uh, some kind of way of digesting our food really, really well so there's nothing left for candida to eat. Um, and in that sense, things like these herbal bitters help stimulate that digestion. They stimulate the liver. Uh, and that's another really good way to kind of start with the top of digestion. There's a few herbs in here that help with stomach acid, uh, like meadowsweet. Uh, but this one has also things like peppermint in it. It's got some of the bitters like angelica and gentian root that really stimulate um, proper digestion. But it also has some nice gentle things for gas like fennel seeds, right? So some kind of bitters like that, that's a herbal bitters. Again, how I, we do our cleanse, me and my partner, is we take two to three droppers of these two uh, twice a day. That's the main thing we do. We do two or three droppers of our bitters and our liver um, support to really, as part of our kind of liquid side of that. We're also gonna drink a lot of teas, right? So we're gonna do tons and tons of teas. Uh, so uh, we're gonna start with that and we're gonna add in some teas. That's kind of the core, but I will jump into, while I'm still on tinctures, 
Uh, I'll jump into a couple of other ones after, you know, I'll, I'll wait, I'll talk about the teas first, and then I'll jump into some more tinctures, because we can amp that up as we go along. So, all right. We often suggest doing two teas, and these are kind of the products we want to just sort of share with you as the best idea for doing uh, this type of cleanse, to do a spring cleanse. And they are a, again, to focus on digestion, a digestive tea. So really, this is a gentle cleanse. We're looking to really get the digestive system functioning and eliminate those foods out and get the liver metabolizing it. So here we go. We've got a digestive power. And this one essentially is, a, again, it's got meadowsweet, one of my favorite herbs for working with stomach acid, whether you're hypo or hyperacidic, it's going to enhance and strengthen the the balance of stomach acid. So many people who are hyperacidic, this will, this will lower it down. That is so it's amazing that way. Or hypoacidic, which is much more common, uh, it'll help strengthen and give you more, more stomach acid. So that one, a little fennel, a little bit of marshmallow, a little bit of peppermint, and um, I think there's ginger in this one as well. That one's gentle, tasty, awesome. I do this one as my kind of mid-afternoon tea. That's the one I've been doing during this cleanse, but I'll also maybe take on another, another tea. I might bring a couple more in there. And then we do a specific tea called cleanse tea. And this is actually the, the bulk of our favorite tea for doing cleansing. It's got the burdock in it as well, but it's also got some of these other great cleanse herbs, uh, things like padarco and that Oregon grape. Uh, both of those are in there. They're both lower intestinal tract cleansers. To work with that. There's also some uh, some cleansing blood support, things like red clover blossoms that are really good for that, and alfalfa to really cleanse the blood, and dandelion leaf for kidneys. So we're going to work on the kidneys and support it that way. This tea in itself is a bit of a cleanse. If you just want to get one thing to just kind of gently cleanse, work with a tea like this, just start drinking big dosages of it three cups a day. So that's my recommendation is that you do two, these two tinctures or something along that line at a like four to five to six milliliters of a day. So either two to three mils twice a day of each one and three to four cups of tea of a good strong herbal brew um, at that time. I recommend doing the cleanse tea in the morning and the digestive tea in the evening. Now I saw another question here about elixirs. Can I add those in? And I'd like to talk about um, that. No honey, right? No honey. Um, also, you can do things like our resilience and radiance and those kinds of things. Those are all great. I just um, remember that most of the time those are builders. Probably my favorite elixir for a cleanse would be a golden milk. Golden milk is slightly cleansing, moving out. Most of our restorative blends and our elixir blends are designed to really restore essentially, and to build the system, to strengthen and fortify it. The cleanse, think of it as one of these elimination diets. We're moving out everything else. Again, I recommend taking no multivitamins. Don't take any essential fatty acids. Don't take your typical uh, supplement regime. Clear that and take high doses of some of these other things. Another one my wife really recommends is to get into sea vegetables. Sea vegetables have the capacity to bind to toxins and pull them out of the body. So they're a really good one. The alginates and sea veg, to start adding that in as part of your kind of greens makeup and part of your salads. So the sea veg blend is a favorite of mine. I love this. I mean, there's lots of other companies that do sea vegetables, but man, we've got this, these amazing, just so bright, how green and vibrant they are. I just, every time I see them in the dispenser, I'm like, wow, those are nice sea vegetables. So that's one I would add in. And on the greens level, if you're not getting enough chlorophyll in there, um, yes, you name it, green power blend. Um, get your chlorella, get your spirulina, get your moringa, get your alfalfa, and your wheatgrass. Those are all great greens. This is a zero sugar blend. We do a unsweetened on purpose because we believe you should choose your own sweetener and your own level of relationship with sweetener in life. So most of our products, actually every single one except for our syrups, and our five mushroom chocolate have no sweeteners in them. Everything else, zero sweetener. Um, but yeah, that's my recommendation. Green Power Blend is a, another good one to scoop in um, to really increase that chlorophyll concept. So, um, so those are some of the add-ins that I would do for that side. But 
depending on your cleanse, you may want to get a little more sophisticated. So that's just kind of the base. We want to work on this kind of blood, colon, uh, liver support that's happening with the teas, digestive support that's happening with the tinctures and the teas, liver support that's happening with the tincture. That's a basic cleanse. Um, and that's great. That's awesome. That's enough. We may want to go deeper and we may want to take a bit more since we're already in that momentum. That's where I start to suggest things like getting into other tinctures like a candida or a parasite or I guess candida or parasite tincture where maybe we're ready to move out a bit more. And so I would then add in the candida combat tincture to my cleanse. So I've got my, I take a herbal bitters, a liver and a candida combat. And that would be, that's actually what I did last time. Um, I added in the candida combat because I know that I, I don't need a ton of sugar, but um, I know from the last few times I've cleansed that I really crave, uh, like even the wrap. I'm like, well, I could just, a wrap would be great. It's a small amount of flour, but I crave that stuff sometimes. And so that tells me I got candida. I need to move that out. Um, so a cleanse twice a year, if I can do it, is a great one to add in extra candida combat. Another one is parasites. All of us, well, really the stats say 90% of people have parasites at some point in life. Uh, we may want to add in some anti-parasitic herbs. I'm not saying parasites are bad. I actually see some, there's some great science now that's showing that things like flatworms have been used to help stop people who have irritable bowel, to actually combat inflammation in the gut. And some level of ecosystem parasite might actually be beneficial. Think of a parasite or some of these worms and things. I know that's gross to think about, but think of them as maybe like large predators in your ecosystem, right? You don't want to eliminate them all. You just don't want them out of balance. Uh, you don't want too many of them. And yeah, they can create toxicity in the body. So we might eliminate, do some parasite elimination. If that's our focus, if we really use cleanse, potentially eliminate parasites, we really want to do that around a full moon when parasites are laying their eggs. So we might choose to do a cleanse then. Anyway, those are two other suggestions. I personally recommend the candida combat to add into a cleanse. And there's one more that I would maybe think about because there's really only a bit of dandelion and burdock and I guess there's dandelion leaf in the tea, a little alfalfa that's supporting the kidneys. Remember I said, when you work on the liver, you want to work on the kidneys. I would also recommend like a kidney clear um, kind of tincture sometimes. So I've classically done these two together, the liver and kidney tincture as a way of really eliminating toxins. So I might add that in. If I am one of these people who um, has bladder issues or has um, full uh, urinary evacuation issues, or I pee all the time um, with scanty urine or something along this line where I actually know this is one of my weak spots, Cleansing is the perfect time to really amp up on using those liver herbs to support that. Um, if I'm not someone who's maybe had nephritis or some kind of inflammation in the, in the kidneys, um, use your cleanse time to really pivot uh, those types of imbalances. So those are a couple of ideas. One thing I would just recommend to, and that's, those are, sorry, just those are things like juniper is in that one. Uh, the uva ursi is another great one that's in the kidney clear. I believe there is, I'm just gonna read the ingredients, cleavers. Cleavers are another great herb we might add into our cleanse. I'd throw them in a tea. They're lymphatic cleansing. Uh, the uva ursi is an amazing one for working with bladder infections and working with antiseptic throughout the kidneys, but also helping to get the circulation in the kidneys functioning better and get the filtration of the kidneys functioning. Juniper, of course, is one of our best kidney herbs. That also tastes good. Um, I like that one. So it has corn silk, which is for inflammation of the kidneys. You could also do hibiscus, which is not in this one, but um, that is one. Uh, and then horsetail is in here. Horsetail is another kidney diuretic uh, eliminatory channel supportive herb. So I might do that as well. I might add those in. Now, just a couple more that I wanted to mention while I, while I got you here is you know, one of the things that's interesting to me is uh, birds eat toxic berries all the time. You know what else birds eat as a way of cleansing? They eat dirt and clay, and they eat all kinds of clays that bind to many of the toxins in the berries. So the toxins move right through them, and they don't go into their system. 
So we might want to look to this example as something that's part of our cleansing protocol. Maybe we want to work with some of these clays. Um, there are many different kinds of earths and clays that can support our digestive, lower digestive health. So those are things like bentonite clay. So you might want to think about bentonite clay. This is one of the safest ways to cleanse for a pregnant woman. One of the things I should have really kind of said right off the bat, if you're pregnant, um, you don't want to do this type of cleanse. You don't want to eliminate through the bottom. This could create a miscarriage. Like literally anything to the lower uh, abdominal area is counterindicated. All those herbs are out the window if you're in your, especially in your first three months of pregnancy. But the one thing you could do is bentonite clay. Um, so that is a cleanse on itself for someone in their first trimester of pregnancy. But I've sometimes added in a bit of this clay as part of my cleansing protocol. Why? Because the clay cakes to the walls and it's almost like a clay mask. You've seen the face masks. Maybe you've done a few face masks, how they like pull toxins out of the pores. That's another way to eliminate from the skin, right? Um, they pull toxins out of the pores. Well, bentonite clay does that inside of the body and it kind of helps pull out many of these toxins and cakes under the walls and binds to these toxins and eliminates them out through the colon. So it's a great way to work with that. Another one that's a favorite of mine is zeolite clay. This is kind of harder, rarer to get, but far more potent than bentonite clay. This works on a little different kind of, uh, well, bentonite's more like an ionic exchange where it's like exchanging at an ionic electromagnetic level, um, kind of attracting and pulling in like a magnet almost, these, these types of toxins. Bentonite clay works more like a honeycomb. It's like the structure of it at a microscopic level, traps these in traps many of the toxins in these little honeycomb type structures and pulls them out that way so often what i get people to do if they want to do that is like 100 grams of zeolite to a pound of bentonite something like 10 to 1 or if they're going to do both or just do a small amount of zeolite or so you only need a little bit of this this kind of clay one quick question is how do you take clays i know it's kind of weird um I take them in an ounce shot glass of water. So I swirl the clay in with an ounce shot glass, chug, chug it back. I don't put them in my smoothies. Uh, you can put some of these in your drinks and things like that. But I tend to take them in just a small shot glass of water, swirl it around and whoop, down it goes. Um, or a small shot glass of tea. If I'm doing tea consistently, I just pour a little bit off into a, a small glass um, and spin it around and take it that way. My recommendation is at least uh, if you're going to do these two together, do like one part zeolite to two to four to six parts bentonite. Um, take a tablespoon and a half a teaspoon of the zeolite. That's kind of a regular dosage. Another one we might want to do, some people like to do, is diatomaceous earth. If they're worried about parasites, this might be one of those ones for that. It's not my favorite, but it's super gentle and easy to work with. It has basically almost like eggshell type structures in it that kind of scrape and pierce the outside exoskeleton of parasites. Therefore, they always bleed from the inside. So it's kind of like a scraping that's going along the inner lining of the, of the, the colon. So it's a very useful one for parasites that way. I, I've seen a lot of people almost overdo the diatomaceous earth. Make sure you're getting a good food grade diatomaceous earth. Same with the clays, they've got to be food grade. Um, they've got to be of a high quality source, which of course you can always trust from our that we're doing that work for you, making sure that you have that. But if you are buying a different one, just make sure if it's really, really cheap, it might be really, really cheap, <laughs> bad quality. Um, all right, and there's a question, isn't it dangerous to breathe diatomaceous earth? Yes, but that's mostly coming out of non-food grade diatomaceous earth. Yes, it's, you shouldn't be huffing in the diatomaceous earth, it's not one of those bags, but <laughs> nobody would do that. But essentially, it's more from people who use diatomaceous earth in gardening and are sprinkling it around their trees to stop insects, breathing in that dust. That's where that information comes from, where diatomaceous earth is. Because in the wind, you could literally poof, and up comes all this diatomaceous earth. You should not be breathing that in. But that's the non-food grid. This is still not ideal to breathe in either, um, but it's not so much of an issue as the gardening diatomaceous earth. Okay, another question is about activated charcoal. Yes, 
Activated charcoal is a great um, is a great way of eliminating toxins out too. So that's another one we might add in is a little bit of activated charcoal. I should have brought some with me. We also do that and we have a great activated charcoal. I, I love working with, with charcoal, but only in small times, right? Think of this, all this stuff that we're doing here is for a short purge. We're gonna do a short period purge. Essentially we're moving that stuff out quickly and in that like two to three week window that we're going to take, maybe it's only 10 days, but whatever that timeline that we're going to take to do our cleanse, we're taking good dosages of this stuff to move it out of the body, right? I'm not going to suggest you do activated charcoal or diatomaceous earth or these things long term. They're meant for that specific thing. So I don't think taking activated charcoal is great every single day. I think it's a really good part of a cleanse, a purge. I see some one one question about does I think it's a diatomaceous earth scratch the inner intestinal? No, it's because we have these smooth muscles, or it's just a different type of muscle tissue. It doesn't harm us if it's food grade. The thing about the garden grade is that the eggshell type chemistry is quite a bit bigger, and that bigger chemistry can be hard on our digestive tract. But the really good fine food grade diatomaceous earth is is actually only going to harm the exoskeletons of insects and uh, or parasites in our body. So it's actually quite gentle. It's very safe. Many, many people have been taking this for maybe not what I think is the best protocol, which is a consistent everyday use. I think it's a cleansing product and should be kept into the cleansing phase and then replaced with building. And this is something I wanted to just make sure that I reminded you guys of is that there's a whole secondary protocol around building back up. And that's when all your adaptogens and your medicinal mushrooms and your stress balancing herbs and your vitamins and your essential fatty acids and your acidophilus bifidus cultures and your yogurts and ferments really come into place as that building phase after a cleanse. And so this is how we wanna work the body. We wanna soak up water, squeeze sponge, and then soak up water. Um, so we want to do it that way. We want to cleanse, build, cleanse, build uh, throughout our lives. This will keep us young and healthy. That's the goal in part of this is vitality, is quality homeostasis, is not getting tumor systems and random chronic illnesses throughout our lives as we age. As our telomere lengths shorten, our capacity to actually a reheal our bodies becomes weaker and cleansing helps strengthen the and and give longevity to our telomere lengths but also building can really be part of that too so we want to do both that's something i see something in a comment that's coming up here and it's about water and i just want to address that because it's something i haven't talked about I'm talking about a bunch of teas but the biggest thing and i'm just going to have a sip of my tea right now a huge piece of cleansing is not overeating, but definitely almost overhydrating. Water, 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 tea, 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 tea. Little bit of coffee maybe once in a while, but lots of tea, lots of water. If that's your, if you're a coffee drinker, if you're not, okay. But don't be drinking alcohol or juice. No juice on the cleanse, no sweet juices. Um, stay away from your orange and apple juice. If you think that's a little, well, you can get around the sugar. Uh, drink a lot of tea, drink a lot of water, hydrate. What type of water though is the question that this was about. Um, and I want to just say that water is a really loaded question. Lots of people have ideals around water. I have ideals. I've got a crazy filtration system on our house and we've got the most beautiful well water already. Um, but I don't want to put that onto you. My suggestion around water and this is just the simplest suggestion, and it's very neutral, I'll say, is the best water you have access to. Find the best water. Do a little water research for yourself. Find the best water you have access to. If you have the capacity, say you live in Canmore, I saw there's somebody here from Canmore, and you can go to the spring and fill up a jug of spring water, heck yeah, drink that water. Um, if you have only got a water machine in a Safeway and you've got to fill up your water jug of reverse osmosis, heck yeah, drink that water because it's better than other choices you have. So I just, I just highly, highly uh, recommend um, that you 
choose the best water that you have access to. And this is a big, big and. The and is that you refrain from giving yourself guilt if you don't have as good of water as the Joneses or as Yarrow does or as those awesome Canmore Springs are. Don't um, give yourself guilt around not having good water. Choose the best water you have and love it. If you love your water, that is much more vibrational healing than the best quality water ever. Actually, if you look at Dr. Emoto's work and he looks at water, remember to love your food. Remember to love your water. Remember to embrace it and thank your water for being there to nourish you, right? Hydration is about nourishment. Um, we get too technical around what's the best water. And I know there's bad water out there. And so, yeah, we want to be worried about that. But just, I want to invite you to more of a, come from a place in your heart of love um, when it comes to your food, when it comes to your life. Uh, this is the end of a series. I have done this series from a place of love. Um, I really want you to find the best health ever. And I know that some of these herbs are really here to support us. I know that um, we all have uh, this in us to thrive. And so I just, I hope that um, this information and that your, what you internalize as far as your diet, as your cleanse, is coming from a place of love versus a place of fear. It's coming from a place of creating good health versus being a victim of bad culture, right? Uh, that's where we want to come from with all of this. Remember that our vibrational medicine, and even if you look at the biology of belief, the more uh, what our thoughts are, what we create in our imaginal realm becomes our reality. So just remember that um, what you do for your body is out of building this shrine, out of building the best health ever. This is your temple. Treat it like a temple. Treat it with respect and give it the love that you have in your heart to give. You might feel like you got love to give other people. Well, start with yourself. Do a cleanse. Do some clearing. Turn this into a bit of a meditation, spiritual practice for yourself. Move out what doesn't serve you. Make room for the next best thing. The best thing. For the new version of yourself. All right. Okay. This is the end of a series. Um, I want to remind you uh, that Elise is just amazing. She helped put this together. She's going to be sending out a uh, follow-up email with some cleansing bonuses, so to speak. Um, and I just want to thank you for your time. I think that's your most valuable resource. There's lots of other things you could be doing right now, but I just really want to say thank you for joining us in this series. Uh, we're going to do more of these. This was a lot of fun. I think we'll try to do something in the fall. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining us. And you can always see any of the replays. And just uh, may the forest be with you. And um, Harmonic Arts is here to be a medicine bridge to support you on your journey to finding the best health ever. Okay, ciao for now. See you soon. <laughs>